so uh, anything we say from now will be recorded i think excellent recording is started so Hello, welcome everybody. This webinar is about bubbles. Uh, bubbles is a term that's used by the government to describe a restricted uh, group of people. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Des McCann and I'm Woodcraft Folk's Lead Safeguarding Officer. In this session, we're going to clarify what the coronavirus guidance is around group sizes. As I just said, this will be about the guidance as of today uh, and that it may or may not change again in the future. Um, we'll confirm exactly the maximum size of bubble and confirm the difference between a group, a bubble and a gathering. Um, and we will explore what we think is best practice in managing a bubble as we start to do face-to-face -face group activities. Uh, and then I'll also end by sharing some of the resources that's available to help you as Woodcraft Folk Leaders. Throughout the session, if you want to ask questions, just unmute yourself and ask and I will do my best to answer them. But please remember, if you're asking a question out loud, it will be recorded for other people to hear. If you'd rather not be out loud, then please use the chat and I will read your question out for you. So what is a bubble? A bubble uh, is a group of people. I think it's easiest to think of this if you think of a bubble like a clan and therefore it explains the difference between a group and a bubble. Because if we were on camp we would be camping as a group and we would have individual clans within that group to do tasks. So if you think of your group uh, as all of the children and people and adults and the bubble is like a clan of children and young people within that group. I hope that's clear. Um, if not, ask me and I'll try and figure a different way to describe it. The point of bubbles is to try and reduce the social mixing between different people. And the rationale for this is if we limit the amount of social mixing we do, the infection spread will be lower. It is acceptable to be in multiple bubbles throughout your day and week. Uh, so for most children, they will be in a bubble at school. It's OK for them to come to Woodcroft Folk and be in a bubble and they may be in other bubbles throughout the week, whether or not they play in a band or whether or not they play football or whether or not they do any other uh, activities. The guidance to individuals is that we need to be mindful of the amount of social mixing that we do. But currently, it is not, uh, it is not uh, against the regulations to meet for sporting activities, for children's activities and for youth activities and for other educational and training activities. You can also meet to do other volunteering activities. So, I mean, hopefully uh, that's a little clear. So, oh, I've got a little poll for you. For those of you who um, haven't used polls on Zooms, uh, there should be a question that appears on your screen. And I'd like you uh, to vote for what you think is the maximum number of a group of people. I've not done this before, it's very exciting. I can see your responses coming in. Clearly, on a Tuesday evening, I get really bored. So, the results may be in not all of you have voted. Anybody else want to have their last vote? Nearly? No, not quite? Okay. Uh, of those of you who have voted, 25% uh, of you have said that the maximum number of a group is 15. Others have said less than 30. 50% of you have said 30 and uh, one of you said I'm not sure which is why I'm here which is a great answer. Um, the answer to that is a total maximum number of group participants is 30 but that group needs to be organised in bubbles hence the use of, of my use of the word clan so the group maximum is 30 and that bubbles are within that 30. So just to clarify, because this is different from the guidance previously circulated, uh, 
yesterday the government introduced restrictions on social gatherings and, and introduced the rule of six. At the same time, they introduced a list of exemptions of people who could break the rule of six. As I've just said, youth work, children's activities, education, training and volunteering are all exempt from that rule of six. What they also did was stipulate how big a bubble can be. So a bubble is how we organise children and young people. So we can have a bubble of up to 15 children and young people supported by a number of adults. It is possible for you to have 15 children and young people and 15 adults, but most of us wouldn't do that. Uh, but we might have 15 elfins supported by three adults. I I think I can see that there is a question in the chat. Let me just see if I can find the chat because it's disappeared on my screen. Oh, where is the chat? Oh, I can't find it. I think it's probably my question. It's one that I've sort of put on there, um, thinking maybe later on you might want to answer it. I don't know whether it might be easier to do at the end or, or now. Uh, we will I will answer that at the end so well done Marcus thank you um so uh, to just clarify the size of a bubble so bubbles are for children and young people so under 18 year olds must be organized in a bubble maximum size of the bubble is 15 children and young people plus the adults supporting them total size of your group can't be bigger than 30 it is possible to have more than one bubble in the same venue as long as you can keep that bubble separate. Um, I've had a conversation uh, with people about how many groups and bubbles, which I'll come to in a second. Um, when you are deciding how to organise your bubbles, you have to think about how you can reduce household mixing. So siblings together. If you have siblings that operate better apart it is okay to put them in separate bubbles but ideally we want to keep in mind that we should be reducing household mixing and the same comes with mixing school communities ideally we want to have children from the same school in the same bubble so we're reducing the risk of cross-contamination between one community and another you know the children and people best in your group and therefore you do need to be mindful of the group dynamics and, and consider diversity in terms of age and gender as well so when you're organizing your bubble this is the ideal is to reduce household and school community mixing but you also need to make sure that those bubbles work um, and ideally we need to be consistent because most of our groups only meet once a week it is okay to change your bubble week to week. In the school environment where they're seeing each other five days a week, they are being told not to mix their bubbles. But because the length of time between our meetings is usually a week, we can mix them up a little bit. Um, so if your attendance rates change or some dynamics in a bubble just aren't working, you can amend them. To help keep your bubble separate, because this is the important thing, a bubble isn't just uh, temporary, it should be for the whole of the group activity. To try and manage keeping them separate, we're recommending staggered arrival times. Ideally, separate places, which may be one group's in the main hall, one group's in another room, one group's on the grass in the playground, another one's on the concrete in the playground. If we can define the spaces clearly, that helps the children and the young people and the adults know which is their area. These can be defined by physical barriers or they can be just drawn on pieces of chalk, or pieces of string, pieces of rope, whatever you think is uh, useful for the group that you are working with. Each bubble should have its own equipment and each bubble ideally should have its own bathroom. And if it can't have its own bathroom, its own allocated cubicle. At all points, we're trying to reduce the number of touch points shared across bubbles. We should also have the same dedicated leaders uh, from one bubble. So it shouldn't be the fact that I'm running singing tonight, so I'll do singing for the first half an hour with bubble A, and then I'll do singing for the second half an hour with bubble B. That would not be acceptable. 
And again, ideally, we should try and keep things consistent from week to week. So that it's the same bubble in the same area and it's the same bubble with the same leaders. And therefore, that will make it much easier for the children and people coming along to know what to expect. That's clearly the ideal. Some volunteers wouldn't be available from one week to the other, uh, but that's what we should be trying to aim for. Something else to clarify, leaders can deliver different activities uh, to one bubble, then take a break and do another bubble. But this isn't in the same group. So for example, it may be that your elfins run from half five to half six. So you can run an activity with a bubble in your elfins, take a break, clean your hands, uh, clean the venue, and then do a bubble within your pioneer group. That would be acceptable. The other thing that's acceptable is your first aiders can mix between bubbles uh, because the risk of not giving somebody first aid is greater than the risk of uh, cross contamination in this instance. Uh, your first aiders clearly need to have PPE and need to make sure that they clean their hands as they go between one bubble and another. I've been asked various other questions about bubbles. We still need to have two screen members present uh, at the group. If your bubbles are in sight of each other, then it's possible to have screen members in different bubbles. Your adult to child ratios need to be maintained across your bubble. So if you're working with elfins, that would mean for every five elfins, you need to have one adult uh, present to do the supervision. If you're working in a bubble of 10 children, you need two adults if they're elfin age. Um, bubbles can't be greater than 15, and I can keep saying that, but they can be as small as two. So I have heard of a group who are creating bubbles with one child and one parent, and they're a bubble. Um, and you can have as many bubbles as you like, as long as your group size is no larger than 30. Uh, most of our groups at the moment are meeting outdoors, which gives us space. Um, when you are considering moving to indoor venues, you need to think very carefully about how the bubbles will work around each other, because it is important that you manage the space so that children and people don't walk through the middle of another bubble activity and get sidetracked and decide that that bubble is far more exciting. Um, so you would either need to have a very large sports hall or operate your bubbles in different rooms within, within a venue or have very well behaved children and people at your group. Clearly it's much easier to be um, clear with instructions with our older age groups than our younger age groups. Trying to tell wood chips that they need to stay in this part of the hall and not that part of the hall would be incredibly difficult and incredibly stressful. Now, I think, Marcus, this might be your question. Um, if someone tests positive, uh, there are lots of colds and coughs going around at the moment. Uh, it is part of the autumn return to school. Uh, but if somebody in your group develops symptoms, they should go and get tested. Now, it may be that the test comes back negative and that's fine, nobody needs to worry. But until they have a positive test, there is no need for other people within that bubble to self-isolate. If someone does test positive, whether or not that's a child, a young person or an adult, then everyone else in their bubble will need to self-isolate for 14 days. They may be asked to take a test, but more, more likely they'll be asked to take a test if they demonstrate symptoms. And the moment those individuals demonstrate symptoms, the other people that they live with will also then be asked to self-isolate and again seek a test uh, if they develop symptoms. Marcus, this was sort of your question. You had... Um... It actually happened um, in that um, after a, 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 a meet, uh, one of our elfins has had symptoms of uh, COVID, which could be a cold, has had a test kept us informed but they haven't had the test results back yet and now we're approaching Thursday and by our risk assessment I think I'm uh, we're supposed to inform people that um, someone uh, has a cold and isn't isn't coming and just give them a reminder to say if, the, if you have any symptoms please let us know but I, I was going to carry on with the meet because 
we still don't well it was three days afterwards to start with so i i'm not sure well i, I don't know whether it's necessary to close the elfins if it is possible i'm guessing it probably we will probably have to for two weeks but um yeah either way i just wanted a bit of advice on what to do if, if it's if it's a positive test then you will need to uh, ask everybody in that bubble uh, to self-isolate were you operating with one bubble or two uh, yes it's, it's two bubbles i think i'm, I'm actually the coordinator um but i think uh, so I, I'm, I'm i'm hearing the, i've seen the conversation on whatsapp but i wasn't okay. actually there on the day um okay. so but, but actually the problem I'm, i think we're going to face is that we're not going to get the test, test result back in time for the next meeting and you say it was three days because it's one of those it's one of those really tricky situations so uh the advice and guidance at the moment is if they develop t symptoms within 48 hours of your activity yep. then uh you need to tell people um that they that there, there might be a case of infection but if it was three days after that's more than 48 hours uh you might want to go back and check with, with the the family to make sure that you're being clear about your timeline but yeah. currently if you do not have a positive test result you don't need to tell other people to self-isolate okay. um well, i'll need to check out the risk assessment because there's a there is a paragraph in there that is a well it's a bit hard to uh it's, it's from the uh, template that was sent out i think it's the second paragraph down that talks about 10 days as well um which i'll just check out it's a little bit unclear from that exactly what to do but, uh, but um, from, I, I think what you're saying is what I thought was the case. Um, and being three days, then potentially we don't have to do anything at all. Potentially you don't need to do anything at all until they get the test result back. Um, if they're positive and it's three days, and they, um, you know, we, didn't, you know, they haven't, we haven't actually seen them within 20, 48 hours of when symptoms actually started. That, if it's positive they'll be advised by the test and trace system about uh, what guidance they need to do now i'm i'm aware that you're birmingham based uh, and infection rates are increasing in birmingham they, they may tell you to be more cautious uh, than the national guidelines uh, but the national guidelines are, are currently saying that uh, it's going back 48 hours prior to your first sign of symptoms that you need to contact people to say uh, that um, they need to isolate because you've tested positive. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, yes, it cool. sounds like potentially we might be able to stay open regardless. Um, I mean, people, you know, the, the, the nature of the groups, everyone will know anyway. Yes. Um, so. Everybody's waiting, um, and it depends on. I mean, the test testing seems to be taking a different amount of time, depending whether or not you're posting tests off, but whether or not uh, and, and where you're dropping your, your test results are. And sadly, some are getting missed and having to be redone anyway. Um, but I, I will I will make sure that our um, guidance is clear because the guidance keeps keeps changing uh, about what people should and shouldn't be doing. But but in theory they should be informing everybody who they've had contact with 48 hours before the first symptoms and that until they test positive, other people don't need to self-isolate. And if people in that bubble end up self-isolating because of a positive test, their relatives who they live with will not need to self-isolate until the individual in their household begins to demonstrate symptoms. Because I know people are, are, are very concerned uh, about the knock-on effect of families having to self-isolate. But if you did organise yourself in two bubbles, the other bubble that didn't involve the child with symptoms could continue to meet uh, if you wish to. Or you might decide that actually to involve the whole group that you want to return to back doing to online programme. Just a little a little summary of other requirements and this is where things get confusing because the requirements across the UK vary um, so the requirements in England and Wales is that we need to make sure we do hand washing so people should be doing hand washing on arrival people should be doing hand washing before they eat people should be doing hand washing after going to the toilets that isn't just a coronavirus uh, requirement uh, <laughs> and people should be people should be hand washing when they leave we should be looking at increased um cleaning 
uh, and we should be making sure that if we are indoors the venues that we're using are taking precautions. Now I'm aware that some venues are asking uh, for Woodcroft folk groups to clean and take responsibility and other venues have increased the level of cleansing. We are still required to do two metres social distance and 11 year olds uh, and above, so that includes our older pioneers, our venturers, our DFs and our adults should be wearing a mask if we're indoors or if we cannot maintain that two metre social distance. So if we were travelling uh, on a bus or if we were giving first aid, um, ideally we should be trying to avoid all those circumstances that would mean we're closer than two metres. We need to make sure that we also have a register uh, so that we can inform the NHS test and trace system. I've got a question from Dan. Dan, what's your question? Do you want to say it out loud or do you want me to read it? Well, it's from Journey, strictly speaking. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm just checking. You were saying there to Marcus that he would need to let his elfins know if there was a positive test. Is that something the leaders need to be doing? Are we passing information to track and trace? Do we have any guidance as to you know, what we should or shouldn't be revealing? I, I personally think it's best if we uh, contact our group members. Uh, there is information we would have to, we would also need to pass the information to the test and trace people. But a message to say we've had a positive test in bubble A, uh, this now means that all participants of bubble A need to self-isolate. I think it is a good relationship to come directly from us rather than somebody be contacted by the NHS test and trace and have absolutely no idea uh, where their cross-contamination may have happened. So presumably I need to make sure that all the families have, I don't know, my details to pass on to track and trace? Yes. Yes. Or, 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 or whoever the group contact is. What we shouldn't be doing is saying, <laughs> we shouldn't be naming the child or the family who have tested positive. As Marcus just alluded to, it may be that families know anyway, um, because some of the families are very, very much connected in their everyday life. But we shouldn't be revealing which child, but we should be saying in bubble A or bubble B, we've had a te positive test. Sarah's got a question about um, social distancing. Do you want to ask your question out loud, Sarah? Or yeah, I'm quite happy to, if you can hear me. Um, I can. As it's quite pertinent to, to my pioneers group, we've got a, about a lot of children that are sort of third child into Woodcraft. So they love it. They were pleased to see each other last week when we met. They think they're in school bubbles or family bubbles, you know, into family bubbles. And it was very, very difficult for some of them to maintain the social distancing. And these are not young pioneers. They're older pioneers that, that sort of, so it's how hard you come down on it. Has anyone got any tips? I, I found it really difficult and it's kept me awake at night a little bit. It's, it, it is really, really difficult. Um, uh, so it's about that balance of what stresses you out the most. Yeah. But it, it's about constantly reminding people that Woodcraft folk is not school and therefore the rules are different and that if we want to continue to meet, then we need to follow the rules. And it's particularly difficult if you meet in a school because uh, it may be that the pioneer goes to that school in the day with one set of rules and then comes to that school once a week uh, for Woodcroft folk and has a different set of rules. It, it's more that they're in, with, in friends in this, they're in like a year eight bubble, do you see what I mean? And they think, oh, when well, we're in a bubble, we don't, the rules don't apply to us because we're already in a bubble at school, do you know what I mean? And, and it's sort of, when do you say, look, if you really, really can't do it, you're, you're just going to have to go home or, you know, it just feels, it, it feels, it feels quite hard. But I think the reminders, and they're sort of preempting parents maybe before they come to talk to their children or young person. I, I think I think it's about ha having having um, the reminders at their opening circle, so you remember, uh, and, and just constantly uh, sounding like a, a r r broken record of going. We do need to keep our two meters apart. Um, 
and I'm aware that this is different from school and we just need to keep reminding people. And I think we need to think about what games and activities we play that at least support social distancing. Uh, Arissa had something to add. Arissa, do you want to unmute yourself and Yeah, I, we, we had a pre-meeting, parents meeting, like a Zoom one, to kind of talk about all the principles from the guidance and what we thought we could do as a way forwards. And then our first meeting, we asked all the parents to come as well. So we met in households and went through it all again to make it really clear so that all the children, because we have some children who are in the same bubbles at school as well. Um, but we talked a lot about what was happening at school and how they were um, managing that at school. Um, and so just made it really clear with all the parents there as well so that they could basically re-emphasize all the messages Thank you. And, and, and i think yeah we, we we need to be mindful of the well-being of uh our young members so it's not about getting cross and it's not about getting frustrated but it is about regularly going actually the rules are different for woodcraft if we want to stay up and we want to continue meeting we do need to follow them um and showing by example that you are also keeping two meters apart and that you're not having a chat uh, with your friend that you've not seen since last week because uh, we're all in the same boat although we're not technically all in the same boat because the requirements are different in Scotland uh, they also have the hand washing and the increased cleaning their uh, social distancing children under the age of 12 don't need to social distance um, but children over the age of 12 are not allowed at any contact uh, whatsoever uh, and their age by which you need to wear a mask is slightly different um, so uh, it, it just goes to show that, that that the requirements vary and our rules will be changing from time to time are there any questions or comments about bubble sizes or more to do about the test and trace system can i ask about masks you can ask about masks do, do we have to have oh somebody else wants to ask my mask <laughs> do we have to wear masks indoors uh with 11 plus yes if you even if you can keep the two meters social distance yes currently so our advice is to stay outdoors. Yeah, well, we are. But what about um, if, what about adults with elephants? Do they have to wear masks? Yes. Okay. So if, if, they're, my, if they're indoors. Bronwyn, go for it. My question was just whether or not wearing a mask. So I'm, I haven't yet met with kids. So Sarah has and I haven't, but I'm, even outdoors, the two meters is going to be challenging. Um, if they wear masks, can they be closer together? If they wear that, masks, they can be closer together. Um, but that but obviously the, then brings a whole level of other complexities to it that you have to talk through masks and so on and so forth. Yes. I mean, the, the youth work guidance is that we should, wherever possible, be two meters apart. Okay. Uh, and well, only that's when much we can't. Simpler than and only if we can't be two metres apart, such as if we're sitting on a bus, should we then be taking that one metre plus precautions of wearing a mask. Um, but indoors, the youth work guidance for uh, England and Wales is that if you're over the age of 11, you should be wearing masks unless you have a medical exemption. Now no, that no, guidance... We're not planning to meet indoors. That guidance may, may change. Um, but at the moment, we should be avoiding being less than two metres apart uh, wherever yeah. possible and uh, be wearing masks if we are indoors. Um, yeah, and sorry, the, whole youth work, the whole youth work sector is really struggling with it. That sorry, Deb, so have, go for it. I have, a, I have a question. I think you might, you might have already answered this. I'm sorry about that. We, we have um, groups of 15. Yeah. Um, and um, we're meeting outdoors, only outdoors. We use tippy taps to wash our hands and all that sort of stuff. We've got everything in place. I was just wondering, social distancing between um, uh, groups with bubbles within those groups, 
Uh, do we still need to have bubbles or can we have a group of 15 acting as a bubble? The, the maximum size a bubble can be is 15. So if you've got 15 children in your group, usually that's one bubble. But, but individually, they would still need to socially distance and they'd need to socially distance from the adults. Yeah, OK. Even, outside. Uh, even, even if they're outside, social distance between each other. Even if they're outside. OK. Debs, Debs, can I just ask another question? I think you might have covered it, but I wasn't quite sure on what you said. Um, in terms of adults, so we're, we've got a big venture group um, that's more than 15. And so the plan, current plan is to divide it into two bubbles and mm -hmm. see how that goes. But our adults are much more um, come and go. Like there's a few of us that are there probably one week or another, but then we rely on, especially if we're going to have to be two groups, we need four adults for the ratios. Um, if can, you, if you're can, adults, can adults change each week? They, they, they can, yeah, because, because, because our bubbles usually see each other once a week, it is okay for their membership to change, both children and adults. But okay. if your bubbles are in sight of each other, then you wouldn't need two leaders with each bubble for your venturers. Right. You could have a bubble of 10 venturers with one adult and another bubble of 10 venturers with one adult. We're just wondering whether to try and keep them in sight of each other or whether to do something where they swap places that, that we haven't, we've kind of only got really, we're just working on what we could do this week, but we also don't know what kind of numbers are going to come. Because I would say on a back, so yeah, we're sort of working that out, but that's interesting. So we could potentially have, 20 kids with two adults so long as they stayed in two bubbles yes but you'd have to be doing the activity separately from what you've said before this you, you would you'd have to be doing the activity separately um but you could be for example in the same park on like separated in a, across the just in two separate spaces as, as long as you can see each other yeah then you could be in the same park or the same playground or uh, and have 20 venturers and two adults. Yeah, and just coming back, sorry, I know the ratio is one to 10, but you, we normally have two adults once there's a group of kids. So would you advise having only one adult with a group of children? We wouldn't usually do that. If you are in sight of the other bubble, then, then technically you are one large group organizing oh, two bubbles group. got you yeah 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 okay that makes it all right i'm following you but, yeah. but you know you know your part better than i uh and therefore if you think it's not possible to stay in sight of each other then you then you should bring other adults in okay no that's helpful we'll have a think about it yeah but, that but, makes sense but though. the what concept makes is sense. the total group shouldn't be bigger than 30 and in that right. 30 children need to be organized in bubbles no bigger than 15 yeah and then ah, so the so the group include the number the thirty in the group includes the adults, but the includes the, the bubble, adults. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, I'm with you. But but yeah. bizarrely, the bubble it doesn't. Fine, that explains people's have been muddled on that one. People have been asking me. Surely, the fifteen includes the adults, but that well, makes sense. That a few a few weeks ago, doesn't. the fifteen did include the adults. It no right. it no longer includes the adults, um, right. but the thirty does. Yeah, got you. Okay. Uh, I I can completely understand why there's confusion, uh, and uh, I can only and say just really one other question. That, Go for it. One other question that you mentioned when we spoke the other day. You mentioned, and I meant to look through the detailed guidance, but in terms of travelling, if yes. people were to lift share, you were saying that might be allowed under an educational setting. The, the guidance for lift share is that we should avoid it wherever possible. If it's going to take place, then people need to be wearing face coverings because they can't do the two metre yeah. social distance. And that if you have a large car, you yeah. shouldn't ram it with people, that you should try and no. leave space between the different households in your car. Clearly, sure. if you drive a Mini, that's really difficult. Uh, if you drive a big seven seater like me, then it's easier to spread people out. Um, gotcha. That but, makes uh, sense. Okay. So we can use transport, public transport, and do lift sharing. We should try and avoid it, though, wherever possible. 
Um, and if we can't, then we need to do things like face covering. And again, make sure people wash their hands before they get in the vehicle and when they get out the vehicle. So if there is any trace, they're not uh, okay. taking it from one place to another. Okay. So that the travel isn't um, particularly group nights. The travel relates to a, a, an idea we've got to try and run a, a sort of camp day, a sort of bushcraft day, or few, well, several hours on a nearby campsite in lieu of doing any camping. But that was why the travel came into it. Yeah, but no, we the, won't the, generally be travelling. Tra tra travel is acceptable, uh, but okay. with extra precautions. Okay. Okay. Overnight stays, Thanks. on the other hand, aren't uh, aren't permitted just yet. No, sure. I just wanted to bring your attention to a page on the Dream Big at Home website. Um, for those of you who haven't visited the Dream Big at Home website, you'll find over 300 activities that you can download and do either as individuals or groups. They do have a number of activities that have been planned and uploaded for groups to do socially distanced. So go and check them out. Uh, if you have other activity suggestions, you can share them at info at woodcraft.org.uk and we can upload them to the website for others to test and try. I think we're all going to be sharing as many activities as possible. I did see on our Facebook group, people asking for socially distanced games ideas and I'm aware that some people in this call have shared some game ideas so thank you keep doing it um, just wanting to again draw your attention to some sources of information so on the Woodcraft Folk uh, Covid reopening page you will find the, the latest national guidance from Woodcraft Folk the latest guidance from the youth work national agencies for Scotland and for England. Wales isn't as lucky to have a national youth agency. Um, also on that web page you will find links to various webinars, example risk assessments, the template posters that we should be using. You will also find an example social story, thank you Jenny at Bristol, uh, and you will find the letter of exemption. The rule of six rule that was introduced on Monday uh, it does not apply to children's group activities and youth work group activities. So we have shared with group leaders an exemption letter. So if you get stopped or asked by parents, you can show it to them and say, no, this activity is currently permitted. In areas where there are local lockdown, youth work remains at amber level. So therefore, face-to-face -face youth work can still continue. The rule of thumb, is if pubs and restaurants remain open in your local area, youth groups can remain open. If you are in an area of local lockdown, it is worth checking your local authority in case they've introduced other restrictions. Um, but we are monitoring every week uh, the local lockdown restrictions uh, and making sure that if they return to the red level of youth work, i.e. when we can't meet face to face, we will inform groups who operate in that area that they need to cease face to face activities. Um, but the National Youth Agency has been very busy lobbying government to get youth work recognised as an essential service and for it to continue during future restrictions and lockdowns that may or may not happen. And then I just want to remind you about some training. We've been doing lots of webinars, which you can watch again. So there are webinars on social distancing. There's webinars on infection control. Um, Coming up, we've also got a webinar about young people and mental health, uh, which you are welcome to come and join. Uh, we've also got a session about teaching blogging, uh, which is specifically for one of our projects. But if you fancy uh, testing your skills in blogging, then come along to that. That will be uh, starting next week. Uh, and the mental health webinar will be on the 28th of September. There's another question in the chat. Oh, actually, no, it says oh, I need to go. Thank you, Marcus. Good luck. Let me know if it's a positive test and I can give you some advice. And just a reminder that actually everything that we are producing nationally is available on the COVID reopening page. So example risk assessments, the links to the training and the guidance. Uh, that's really all I wanted to say for tonight to say that 
to remind us all that the total group size still needs to be 30, including adults, children, and young people. Within that 30 group, the children and young people need to be organised in bubbles of no greater than 15, and that the ratios of our adult to children need to remain the same, but that can be across the group as long as we are in sight of each other. If you have two bubbles meeting in the same venue, but in different rooms, and there is a wall in between, you will need to make sure that you have the appropriate adult ratio number for the age group that you're working with in the room. But if you are outdoors in a playground or a park and you can see the other bubble, then you can share that supervision ratio number across your whole group. I hope that's clear. Uh, if that changes, we will be writing out to all groups and districts um, but currently that maximum 30 number is the same across the whole of the UK and bubbles are not currently required in Scotland but we are recommending that they are adopted um, because it seems to make sense to try and reduce social mixing as much as possible while still enabling us to have some group engagement uh, and to start doing Woodcroft folk activities again. Are there any other questions? Oh, there's another question in the chat. Oh, just thank you. Thank you, Arissa. Uh, I've, got, I've always got another question, haven't I, Debs? You have, Jenny. Go for it. On my register, yes. I presume I need to note down who was in which You do. Bubble. You absolutely do. Right. And am I just understanding we're still distancing in the bubbles so the bubbles are just that preventative when the children mess Fail. up. Yeah. Right. It's when we, we all know we should be two metres apart but then we find ourselves less than two metres apart. Um, it means that we are still only talking about half of our group potentially having to self-isolate rather than the whole of the 30. Because so I'm thinking the first thing I might do tomorrow is not call them bubbles because bubble has always been used for that you don't need to socially isolate within your bubbles. I wonder if calling it a bubble is causing more confusion than it's solving. Maybe. I mean, I, I keep referring oh, to, to, to its clans. I quite like clans. Um, yeah, go with clan. It's, it's a very woodcraft folk term. Stick with it. Um, I'm guessing group doesn't offer me a nice easy way to note on the register who was in which clan because I've just set up an event invited everybody to it and was planning to go down and tick who actually turned up. You should be able to tag people in group so surely you could tag them with bubble A or bubble B. Ooh. I thought that was a person thing not an event thing though. I don't know. It is yes, it's a it's a people thing. You can you can add um, extra information um, within group at, um, by creating other sections, and you can make notes in there. But it attaches to people. Yes, I've got lots of additional information, but I'm just thinking if the bubbles aren't or the clans aren't necessarily the same every week, it's not helpful to attach that to the person record. No, that's true. I just have to make a physical note in somewhere in the review this session planning bit. Or something. Let me ask my group experts to see if they can find another way, but that might be uh, the, might be sensible for at least this week. You can, you can on that note, just sorry, just before we finish, it, you're saying that it, the bubbles can mix up. So if let's, if we, for whatever reason, they do need to mix, they can because of them being a week apart. The group sessions. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So they can't mix Thanks. on the same night. No, no. But, I mean, yeah. but but technically, a leader could go from an elfin group one night to a pioneer group the same night and be in two different bubbles. Clearly, there is an increased risk of that because if they I've, ha have got I'm coronavirus, more worried. I'm more thinking of the one or two groups we've got where there's going to be two bubbles within a group, and next week we've got slightly different split. If if the first Monday of the month you organise in a particular way, the second Monday because people are busy or 
or they're not very well or you know they're a no-show for whatever reason and you have to reshuffle your bubbles you can do so okay fine Okay. And, and and the the rationale there is because there are weaker parts, so therefore, if there was any symptoms passed from one, they would have already started to show. Where in schools, because they're there every day, um, they're oh, told okay. to keep, to maintain the same bubbles because there isn't enough distance for them to start demonstrating symptoms. Um, sorry, this is now getting more confusing. We've decided to do something at the weekend this weekend, so that would mean we've got two events only. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days apart. Is it simpler just to not meet on Thursday so that you can keep your events a week apart? Does that give us a whole nother range of issues to deal with? Uh, the, the, the guidance is currently saying 48 hours. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. So, okay, that sounds... Okay, so, so, so three days is actually okay. Yeah. Okay, good. That's, that makes one thing... Less, if, you talk, if you're talking Thursday to Sunday, that works. Yeah, yeah. But it, okay, fine. Is that all right? That's yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? If you have any questions at any point, simply email either safeguarding at woodcraft.org.uk or email me at debs at woodcraft.org.uk and I will do my best to answer the questions. Uh, the guidance changes, not quite daily, um, but is changing regularly and I'm expecting it to change again as we go uh, with but more experience of youth groups going back and schools going back um, and I'm expecting this whole autumn for our groups to be starting to do face-to-face, -face, maybe returning uh, to do online because we feel more comfortable as infection rates increase in local areas and back to doing face-to-face -face, uh, and that we're going to be a mixture of indoors and outdoors and I feel that we will be hardy and use our winter coats. And if anybody has any suggestions or asks of how Woodcraft Folk nationally can support each other, please do get in touch um, because we like your bright ideas and we'll do whatever we can to support you. Um, for dates in your diary, over the next couple of Sundays, there are member meetups happening at 11am on Sunday morning on the 20th and the 27th of September. These have been divided by region, although are really opportunities for members from across the country to get together, to share what they've been doing during the coronavirus lockdown and to share their plans for reopening, as well as having updates and clarifications on restrictions, guidance and national uh, projects and changes that are afoot. Um, so if you are interested to find out what other groups are doing and how they're planning on meeting, come to the sessions on either the 20th or the 27th of September. But if there aren't any questions for now, I will say good night and I will call an end to the webinar. Good night all. Thank you very much. Bye. And uh, we will see you soon, hopefully. Thank you, Deb. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Debs. Thank you.